Um, let's go on to the kind of the basic stuff that I'd use on every channel. It doesn't matter whether it's um, <clears throat> a bass drum, a snare drum, a bass guitar, um, vocal, guitars, whatever. Um, the Q10 EQ is just fabulous. Now, it just has 10 bands of uh, whatever you want. It doesn't matter whether it's whether you want a, a high pass, low pass, high shelf, low shelf, parametric. Everything is there. Everything is there that you want. And there's 10 bands of it. So one plug-in can do so much shaping. And I can put this across the bass drum. And you've probably seen me do this in other videos if you've watched them. But you can turn up a single band, you can narrow it, or you can move it up and down, you can narrow it right down and find a problem area just by kind of scanning through the frequencies and listening for something that rings and is horrible. So let's have a look at that. So you can hear that ring there. So we're... Uh, there's some whistly stuff around there. Some whistly stuff around there. And there's some rumbly stuff around there that's just like. Mm. So with this plugin, you know, you can identify all those uh, problem areas and just tweak them out a little bit. I mean, you'd have to pull them completely out, but just tiny little bits of tweaking. So, for example, with this bass drum. Around there, around 61, there's a bit of a ring. So I pull a bit of that out. And then the next frequency band I'm going to go for, there was something around 120. Which would make sense because 61 hertz and the octave up from that is 122 hertz. So it's all part of the same problem. So just pull a bit of that out. There was something around uh, 500, a little bit lower than 500. Pull that out. And then I'm going to go for that top end one we were listening to earlier. There is the whistle about 1.8k. Now that, just doing those little bits and pieces and going through, and um, I could keep going all day, I could <laughs> find other frequency bands and widen them a little bit depending on what it is, but just getting the audio source that you want to work with tidy, getting rid of all those nasty frequencies that are clouding it, means that you can turn it up and down confidently without it, hopefully without it interfering with other, um, with other instruments. Um, so the Q10 is pretty much either in mono or, or stereo version is pretty much the first thing on every uh, every channel in my uh, mix and and also when I'm kind of sending out a mix um, as a stereo pair as a, as a mix down I usually have that on the end of it as well just maybe tweaking out a couple of bits where all the tracks together have, have formed a bit of cloudiness in a particular area. So, I mean, I, I can't recommend um, using this enough. Now, there are plugins built into every single bit of software that will also do this um, as well. I, I'm, you know, I could do this, for example. Uh, in fact, I'm not going to turn this off. I'm just going to put a new one on. So, um, if I go to the Studio EQ, which is part of Cubase, um, there's only four bands. But, obviously, you could run two or three of them. So, I could do the same thing with this. Um, I could find that and sweep through, but it's a bit jerky in the way it does it. You have to kind of double click and find the frequency like that. And the, and the notching is not as tight, but still, I mean, for years I used, before I had the wave stuff, I used that plugin to do, you know, many, many mixes and it was great. Um, and the great thing about this as well is, is, is it doesn't have a huge amount of character. You don't want it um, to have 
character particularly you just want it to take out the annoying frequencies so that you can turn that channel up or do something with it afterwards this isn't about trying to model some classic eq that sounds amazing from you know the mid 70s or the mid 60s this is sur what, what i would call surgical eq where you're just trying to nip out annoying things because a lot of people nowadays record um with you know relatively cheap microphones straight into some kind of uh, analog digital converter and then straight into their computer they're not monitoring it they're not eqing it to the computer um they're not sitting there in a separate room with beautiful speakers going oh what if we move the bass drum mic you know two inches to the left or something they're just whacking the mics around recording in and saying i've got to deal with it later in the old days it was harder to deal with it later but you can do a lot of that now um and for the you know for the speed of of getting stuff done sometimes just whacking some mics around and dealing with it later is is the best option um, the other thing I would always do on any channel is is put in a high pass um, with the bass drum. I'll probably start it around 40 because there's just all this low energy that you're never going to hear and it's going to hit the compressor and distort everything and sound horrible. So um, that's the Q10. Another Wednesday afternoon, the same old empty bar. Do you have another drink? I put a fiver in the car. So if you're listening on big speakers, like I am, there's stuff that can literally shake the floor going on right at the bottom end there, which will be in under the whole mix that you really don't want in under the whole mix. I mean, you can, you can hear it between these two um, sentences here. It's like a, a train rumble or something. Um, it, that's what it sounds like to me anyway, it's real low end rumble. So first thing I'm going to do, surprise, surprise, is put in a Q10 plug-in. Um, and I'm going to roll off some of that bottom end. Uh, what am I doing? Here we go. Another Wednesday afternoon, the same old empty bar. Do you have another drink? I put a fiver in the car. Going out. So I don't know how much you can hear that there, but if I turn it off, uh, you what you're getting is at the beginning of the words, there's this burst of ooh on the low end. Another Wednesday. And if I turn the plug in on, so I'm cutting that bottom end. Another Wednesday afternoon, the same old empty bar. Do you have another drink? I put a fiver in the car. Now let's look for problem areas. Council tax is going out today. Spend all my money to let it. Right, so that's a ring. Now I'd imagine, I don't know what mic it was recorded on. I, I know nothing about how it was done. Um, but sometimes with certain microphones, they have a resonant frequency of their own and you can get sort of an overtone that's just there in the background of whatever's being sung just because you're your voice hitting the microphone is making the microphone shake at its resonant frequency and and Next bit, dear, but for now we don't I think it's around there around 230 235 so that's going to go I'm going to widen the cue a little bit on that which is going to get rid of that um I don't know what to do spend all my money in a day or two Gotta be a bad half past five just to do it all again. Cancel taxis going out today. Spend all my money to the next pay dear. But for now we don't know what to do. Spend all my money in a day. Right, there's just loads going on around 760, 740, all of that. So I'm just going to widen that queue a bit and pull a little bit out. It's not crazy, but it's just a little bit of boxiness going on there. Cancel taxis going out today. Spend all my money to the next pay dear. But for now, we don't know what to do. Spend all my money in a day or two. Call me bum, call me joke I'm out working but I'm broke Chasing my dreams but they're running away At least I'm happy for today Call me bum, call me joke I'm out 
I mean, at the moment, everything, because it's not mixed and I haven't done any processing, everything's getting louder than everything else. So I wouldn't usually be turning the vocal channel up like that. I'd probably be turning other things down. But just for the purposes of this, I'm just going to turn it up a bit and we can listen to the difference of how clean it is now. So that's what it is. Listen to that again, I'm going to turn it on. That's what it was. The same 